19 teams are still alive. Yes. Is this a good thing? Yeah. This is going to be great. I mean, w- right now, Dan, do you do does uh, do the folks at, uh, at your shop uh, have an idea of what game two fifty six might be right now? No, I don't know. You you might circle that that what that Falcons Carolina. Yeah, but I, I mean, as you know, NBC and the league don't really want it to be for seeding. They want they want a win or go home situation. Tennessee Jacksonville might be that. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly don't know what that final game's going to be. There's a lot of teams in it. Um, you got a one ten win team in Jacksonville that's already clinched in the AFC, and three ten win teams in the NFC that haven't clinched a thing yet. Um, they all have win and in scenarios um, this weekend, but um, the Falcons can crash that party, and you got the Cowboys trying to make a run that few people thought possible with Ezekiel Elliott coming back and potentially the window of opportunity for Seattle as we've known them of the the uh, Pete Carroll era. I think that we're seeing the end of the first iteration of the Russell Wilson Seahawks. We're going to see a second iteration of them um, with what's going to happen in this offseason. Uh, Philip Rivers has got a shot here, a legit shot, because uh, the Bills that are in front of them at 8-6. and six, Wait, wait, uh, wait. Go, go back to what you said about Seattle. What do, what do you think? The, do, do you think Pete oh. Carroll is going to stay there? Do you think, oh, I do. Oh, I you just do. think that they're going to you – know, oh, yes. I think you're about the second iteration of Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll, um, that maybe some of the Legion of Boom players may not be back. Um, right now, as you know, <laughs> we're calling it on game day morning the Legion of Buh because uh, <laughs> everybody's, everybody's injured pretty much except for Earl Thomas. Um, I, I think you're going to see some changes there uh, on that roster. Um, hmm. But no, I don't think Pete's going anywhere. Okay. But the Pete Carroll, the Pete Carroll team that we've known, with the defense as we've known them, and and Russell Wilson with the players around him, um, you know, you have to do something about that run game. You have to do something about the offensive line. Maybe some of these players on defense don't come back. Um, I think that you're seeing a, a, a team in Seattle that's playing desperate football uh, in Dallas this weekend in a must-win game for both of those teams. So there's still a lot of really intense action uh, with a lot of chips yet to fall. So I like this. You don't? The 19 teams? No, I, I, I do. Um, I, I just like I, – I'd like to have established, you know, their little separation there that, that I know mathematically that a lot of teams, you know, these teams – not all 19 teams have great odds of making the playoffs, but I, I like no, that I there's don't... a little separation. I think it feels – it still feels like it's the Patriots and then everybody else. Do you feel that way? Well, yeah. Well, you know, TB12 is the, is the reason why, and – you know, um, and and at some point the Steelers are going to end up playing a Tom Brady uh, Patriot team and not lose one of their key players either in the middle of the game or going into the game. Maybe Antonio Brown comes back healthy enough and the Steelers get that bye week and they're just one win away from having to go back to Foxborough. Uh, I can give you this scenario okay. uh, you take a look at the teams that are in the playoffs potentially in the AFC most likely and you've got the Chiefs who I know have been bounced from Foxborough before but if they show up in the same manner that they showed in week one I think that would be a much tougher game than people think and then the Ravens have had considerable success in that building uh, close uh, close calls and, and wins they might show up there and and keep Pittsburgh at home for the AFC championship game. I mean, that's entirely possible. Um, But, you know, um, it does feel like the Patriots are just always going to be a step above everybody, not only because of Tom Brady. This is one thing that I I don't think a lot of people have talked about because we're lost amongst the catch, not a catch, and then – you know, Big Ben saying, I wanted to spike it, but then I heard a voice in my head and it was a coach and blah, blah, blah. Is that the Patriots defensively were ready for the situation? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. That's, they're, they're one of the most situationally terrific teams. And, and all that I'm hearing this week uh, is, that, is that Belichick tells all his receivers, do not dive for the goal line because you could see what happens. Otherwise, you get benched. So, that's another reason why they're tough to beat. Yeah, the fact that they were prepared for that, even the fact that he's telling his players, don't do what these other <laughs> these other receivers are doing, and that is reaching for the goal line, the potential to lose the ball, have it go out of the end zone for a touchback is, 
you know, there's no no detail left, uh, you know, unchecked, no box there or uh, stone unturned. Uh, it's 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 incredible what what they've been mm-hmm. able to do. I mean, the Spurs might be the only other team in sports that are come close to being situationally brilliant in any scenario that that you could think of. I mean, they really are brilliant. And that, that that comes into play in crucial moments like we saw this past week in a, the most crucial game of the regular season. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.